So this is the RCA MI-12182A theater amplifier. It's uh, 70 watts and it can be bridged and it can be daisy chained together. Uh, you got relay uh, access to the relay connections and, and the uh, audio outs. Of course you get the big fat 5R4 rectifier. That's your main rectifier for the output tubes and most of the amps B plus. We do have a selenium rectifier underneath and in, inside here that's used for what looks like mostly the biasing circuit of these two tubes. And speaking of the devils, <laughs> these are the 6146 beam power tubes. Ordinarily these are used in uh, RF applications, but RCA has designed these two tubes into a audio amplifier which is pretty powerful and uh, impressive once you get it up and running correctly. There are some things I want to go over with you if you're not familiar with this chassis and if you're going to be dabbling in it, uh, there's some things you should know. I actually have two of these, so I'm working on two of these uh, together here. The ultimate goal is to have stereo. But we're going to focus on this chassis because uh, I've just just set up the bias adjustment for these two tubes and I wanted to go over that but some things that you need to know for example the plate voltages on these guys they're in an excess of 570 volts so you're going to want to keep your, an eye on your hands and watch what you're doing when you're uh, when you got this thing live it's uh, could be a very dangerous situation and one other thing I'll point out that's very important is you'll see this cap right here it, it's got duct tape over it but it's it's made over here on this side it's got the original insulation the uh, unlike this capacitor uh, package where the case is grounded electrically grounded to the chassis this one is not <laughs> so it's it's literally hot compared to the chassis or at least compared to this guy so if 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 yours doesn't have the original coating on there, you're going to want to slip something. Someone did a very interesting duct tape job, but it uh, it may not be the prettiest, but it has definitely made it a little safer to work with. One little tidbit of advice I'm going to give you on this is this is what I use. This, these right here are one of my main service tools when working on a, an amplifier chassis like this. You want to keep some gloves on if you're working on it, uh, adjusting the bias or while the power is on. Not only are these things thermally hot, but they are uh, they're electrically hot too. Like I said, there's 570 volts in the plates of those tubes right there. Ouch. So um, another thing I want to make you aware of is we I did mention this terminal strip that has all these voltages and. Uh, audio is available to you. This B plus uh, terminal. This B plus terminal, in reference to ground, has 284 volts on it. So you're gonna want to you're gonna want to know about that. And what I did, I just put a little piece of tape there, just so I don't get reminded of that at a very inopportune time. And for power, you've got a common, well, which is actually uh, we're using as the neutral. Your filament wire, which is a hot positive, 120. And we grounded this here. Uh, there's your chassis ground. It's actually earth ground. And the plate connection goes into the hot uh, AC line. So both of these uh, amplifiers came in, uh, they both had open filament transformers. You can see this one is uh, has been rebuilt. And this one, believe it or not, we found on eBay was new old stock. Probably the last one in the world, so we bought it and put it in there. Okay, the way the uh, bias is adjusted on this amplifier chassis you connect uh, an ammeter to a quarter inch jack and you plug it in the respective slot which inserts the ammeter in series with the bias circuit. Now what I've done here is I 
had two very old pocket VOM meters that I dedicated to this purpose just so I could more or less check the bias in terms of balance because the tubes have to be balanced uh, and you'll see why in a minute. You can see they're both running at about 20 milliamps. There's 150 the bottom scale. There's 50 milliamps. So we're just probably about 22 milliamps on both of them. If you can see that. Uh, I th These are not precise but they're just kind of like ballpark measurements to get me where I need to be. They want you to let the amp run with uh, a speaker load on it. In this, in this case I got 8 ohms speaker connected to it. That's this big guy over here. And we've got no input going to it right now and I did short the input to ground on, on these terminals here as they request. And I did play with it earlier to get it in the ballpark. As you can see they're calling for a 28 milliamp bias current. Let me, let me go over to this one I can show you. Here's the setup. There's the adjustments and the the jacks without any stickers on them. Uh, even tells you right here, you don't have to look at the literature, 28 milliamps per tube with no signal input. And there's your adjustments. And what I've done was to adjust these. You can see Swing it down or up, up a bit. I'm going to go back to 22. You can actually hear uh, it balance out because when you go a little far off, a hum starts to develop. Hear that? Swinging it back down. Actually back up a little bit. So that's how we do that. Okay, and like I said, that's not a precise measurement by any means. So what we're going to do, I got my gloves on, you notice, pull the jacks out. Okay, so I got this uh, arrangement here. I'm going to plug this in. I don't want that to touch the chassis by any means. Okay, now I'm going to look at what we got here. We got 23 milliamps. So I'm going to put a little diddle stick in there and I'm going to look at this. Get it up to 28. You can hear the hum because it's making it a little bit out of balance. Now I'm going to unplug this out of there and I'm going to plug it into here. Okay, we're going to look at the other one. And that's at 24 mils. We're going to bring that up a little bit. You hear the hum departing? Yeah. Because as we get there, I went just a little higher because I heard the hum go even further down. I'm suspecting that really means the tube is the tubes are both balanced now was a pretty simple adjustment. I'm going to disconnect the short to the input and I'm gonna I'm gonna put some sound through this now to see how we're doing. Seems to be pretty happy. See, we're pretty good. I'm confessing that I love you. Tell me, do you okay. love me too? All right, that sounds pretty acceptable for now. Another note I want to make you aware of: this is the power, uh, the power being drawn. You're going to be looking at the 175 watt scale. This thing's drawn about 140 watts uh, idling. And <laughs> not far from that when it's cranking some audio. Your answer really changed things, making me blue. Yeah. The OC3 tubes are located right there next to the plate transformer. And those are actually cold cathode voltage regulators. 
Their job is to actually keep a steady 210 volts at the screen of the 6146 tubes. And they go right in series with the primary winding of the power transformer. And when they're on and working, they glow this rather mysterious shade of violet. I did forget to mention that both of these units I have recapped right off the bat before we did anything. Which is probably a good practice if you're really serious about uh, restoring this and, and getting it running. There's the preliminaries on, on doing a bias adjust and also making you aware of some of the potential uh, dangerous surprises you could come across. Now, I know most people that are going to be touching these are going to be qualified technicians, but it doesn't hurt to be forewarned about some of the things you should look for. It's quite an amazing amplifier. Um, they've, they have acquired a little bit of fame nowadays because they are one of a kind, they're a piece of history, and they're beautifully designed, and they do sound great. If you're going to do any work on any of these items, uh, be aware of those things that I told you about. I'm certainly not an expert in this, but I have worked on a few of these. So uh, I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you very much.